The things you don't even realize homeless people on the streets need. For example, one pair of twin sisters has created a group called Sisters on the Streets, and they cater specifically to women. When I was volunteering at the winter shelter, I saw a woman that was really frustrated and trying to get a pair of pants without blood on them, and she spent all the money that she had on tampons instead of food for that day. And so we realized pads and tampons should not be a luxury, and you should not have to choose between a meal and hygiene. We always bring clothes, shoes, feminine hygiene, soap, shampoos, books, nails polish. As for these ladies, well, a handbag is more than just a handbag, and that's what they hand out. We give out handbags to women and living in shelters who are looking for work. So the handbag is related to them going to interview, building confidence, and making them feel good about themselves. We're able to give the women who normally walk around with a plastic bag in the street a sense of pride. That sense of pride seemed evident as this woman walked off, not just with a new leash and vet voucher for her dog, but a handbag for herself as well. Councilmember Paul Krikorian started Homeless Connect Days in 2014. This event at LA Valley College also attracted community college students who are experiencing homelessness. According to Krikorian's office, a recent survey found that nearly one in five community college students in the LA area is homeless. More than a thousand seniors show us they still have plenty of get up and go in their communities and on the dance floor. <laughs> There's a party happening at the L.A. Convention Center. Seniors from South Los Angeles having a good old time at an annual luncheon honoring them. It means a lot, a lot, because a lot of people don't do nothing for the senior citizens. South L.A. Councilman Curran Price hosts this party every year, inviting some 1,300 people from his district for a little bit of dancing, a little bit of food, just a small token of his appreciation all their years of service. Seniors play such an important role in our, in our community, and this is an opportunity for us to, to say thank you. Stopping by was the councilman's 92 years young mother, Charlena, LA City Council President Herb Wesson, and all these lively older adults, many of whom have not missed a beat since retiring. I spoke to people who still volunteer through church and other community activities. When he's not dancing, Omawala Ola helps feed people experiencing homelessness. Give away food, you know, food banks, these kind of things. Stay active. And if you're looking to volunteer, the LAPD wants you. We do, especially like at the front desk and helping our officers and doing callbacks to victims to see, you know, um, are they satisfied or if any more information has come out. They can help us with mailers. They can help us with events when we do a community event. There's so much things that they can do. And our young officers, not only do we need the help, but we need their talent. We need their experience. And their energy, too. The annual luncheon is now in its 18th year with no signs of slowing down. Well, nothing teaches you better to become a firefighter than hands-on training. And some young ladies got a first-hand look at what it takes to become one of LAFD's finest during the 5th annual LAFD Girls Camp. Chief Ralph Terrazas of the Los Angeles Fire Department encourages these young women at the LAFD Girls Camp, a two-day camp for girls between the ages of 14 to 18 that introduces them to a career with the fire department. Today, at a minimum, what I expect to happen is that our young women will get confidence, they'll see their future if they choose to pursue that career, and you'll see role models that you'll interact with throughout the day. I'm here for to become a firefighter, and I'm really interested in doing this because this is like a passion that I always have. Six stations were set up to put their skills to the test. We have interactive training exercises where we teach them how to handle a hose, teach them how to use power tools, climb ladders, first aid and CPR. So we give them all the tools and techniques they would need. For many, it's exciting just to have the opportunity to explore this option. I'm looking firefighter, police or the military. So this is just another way for me to know if like I do want to pursue just the firefighter or if I want to go to something else. I wish when I was younger they would have had those programs. So I'm like, I get emotional again because she's like willing to do something at such a young age. The camp is held twice a year during the spring and fall. For many of these young women, they will leave not only having learned about the fire department, 
but about themselves. It's really the, the, the belief that you can do anything you set yourself to do. It's really this, this inner strength and this belief in yourself that you can do and grow up to be anything you want to do. You just got to believe in yourself and you have to try. You have to show up and you have to be committed to the two-day event. And I think that the strength that you're going to derive from these exercises are going to be something that are going to be very valuable to you in the years to come. And for those who are interested in continuing with the Los Angeles Fire Department, there are a few more workshops they'll have to go through. Officials say one can become a firefighter at 18 years old if they've completed and passed all the training. The camp is a free program. For more info, visit joinlafd.org. A boyhood obsession with Japanese toys becomes a museum exhibit that's much more than child's play. We take a look at how World War II tragedies influence Japanese pop culture in a monstrous way. Look, Godzilla and other strange beings have invaded Little Tokyo, all part of a new toy exhibit at the Japanese American National Museum. When I was young in the 90s, I was exposed to Godzilla, Ultraman, so it was really nice to see this um, exhibit. It's called Kaiju vs. Heroes. Kaiju is Japanese for giant monster. I watched people coming out of the exhibition. Some of them are very nostalgic, but a lot of people start, you know, thinking about their culture. August 1945, the bombings at Hiroshima and Nagasaki devastated the Japanese people. But from the ashes, a pop culture giant emerged, Godzilla. The movie Monster was a metaphor for mass destruction in the atomic age. The popularity of Godzilla and other kaiju films helped Japan rebuild its economy after World War II. With television came toys of these supersized characters. Enter Japanese-American collector and illustrator Mark Nagata. In the exhibit, Nagata shares some of his favorite action figures from childhood and also shares some of his own creations as founder of Max Toy Company in San Francisco. That is just a tiny fraction of his collection. Now one of the highlights of this exhibit is this interactive game where, as one of Mark Nagata's creations, the Aizen, you can destroy parts of Little Tokyo. It's actually really fun. Yep, that's me, a giant monster. That's City Hall to the right, LA This Week Studios on the left, or was our studios. It's all in good fun, of course. The exhibit, it'll remain standing at Little Tokyo's Japanese American National Museum through mid-March. Curators say through pop culture, people can learn about the struggles of the Japanese and Japanese Americans while still having fun. The museum is open Tuesday through Sunday. Well, the circus is in town right here in our arts district. But this circus is a little different than your normal one. Rasha Goel takes us to LA's 2-Bit Circus. Hey everyone, I'm at the 2-Bit Circus Micro Amusement Park. And let me tell you, this is a place where fun meets technology. And it's right here in downtown Los Angeles. Now, it's got some of your old favorite video games, but you get the carnival feel all in a technological sense. And for VR lovers, well, there's something here for you as well. Come on, let's go take a tour. thousand square feet of fun. Two-Bit Circus is the brainchild of co-founders Brent Bushnell and Eric Gladman, both who come from a tech background, and Gladman who has also been a former circus performer. They say it's something that was needed in the downtown community and helps bring people together and socialize. I toured around for many years. I was an acrobat, and an aerialist, and a fire dancer, and a clown. And here, I get to do both of those things. I get to be a performer, and I get to build high-tech crazy fun. We've really focused on things that are social. Four-player standing games, four-player seated games, really getting stuff that's both fun to play as well as fun to watch. And there's plenty to explore. A carnival midway, a 100-seat game show theater, games, restaurant, and bar. And here's something you won't see every day. We have a robot bartender. His name is Guillermo Del Poro. He was completely custom built for the single sole purpose of getting people drunk. And he makes a mean motor oil martini. 
Mayor Eric Garcetti and Bill Nye, the science guy, also came out to check out the fun. This will be the new arcade, a place where you don't just sit at a machine by yourself, but you interact and do things together, where we can take the future and not be scared of it, but we can actually tame it and steer it to the things that we want to be, the things that we want to do. What is this here, if not the useful arts of entertaining ourselves? So people have taken STEM and they've made it into STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Wow. And for me, one of the coolest things was soaring and flying above the city through this virtual reality simulator. So being on this makes you feel you're a bird, basically. Oh, oh I just crashed. We love technology, and so we've applied a lot of the, you know, the latest tech that we can find from different kinds of cameras and virtual reality to cheap sensors and, and have built our sort of modern take on the circus. Two-Bit Circus is a permanent fixture in downtown Los Angeles, but the neat thing is they have the ability to change up the games. We've built this as the movie theater for interactive, so we're constantly able to change the content, keep it fresh, uh, you know, both with the stuff that we're making as well as things that partners are making. So we've made this as a showcase for different kinds of game makers, from touchscreen games to console games, even board games and card games. So step right up and try your hand at some of these exciting games. A modern circus right here in our backyard. 2-Bit Circus is free to enter and you simply pay for attractions, games, food and drinks using a playing card. A memorial sign is dedicated to a fallen LADOT officer. Traffic on the west side gets back to normal after a project is finished early and a new Baldwin Hills playground gets kids moving. All these stories in City Beat. Councilwoman Nuri Martinez, Councilmember David Rue, and the LA Department of Transportation pay tribute to fallen LA DOT officer Gregory Park and his family with a memorial sign dedication at the northwest intersection of Victory Boulevard and Columbus Avenue. Park was hit by a car involved in a traffic accident nearby. Park is remembered as a military veteran who served his country and then returned home to serve his community for 12 years. His death is a reminder that LA DOT traffic officers faithfully serve Angelinos while putting their own lives on the line every day. I think it's evidenced by how many people have come here today that Gregory Park was not just a great traffic officer, but he was also a great person. The Los Angeles Department of Water and Power has completed a major water infrastructure project located in Benedict Canyon well ahead of schedule. The project had been scheduled to finish on November 30th, but was completed two months earlier because of a well-coordinated effort involving LADWP water system staff working in partnership with the Office of Councilmember Paul Koretz. Cost savings is estimated at $1.8 million. The Benedict Canyon water pipeline replacement began on May 1st. The project replaced 5,200 feet of pipes that had been originally installed in the 1960s with new steel pipes along Benedict Canyon Drive, south of Mulholland Drive to Hutton Drive. The city's Department of Rec and Parks, along with Council President Herb Wesson, celebrated the grand opening of Jim Gillian Recreation Center's playground. This new playground features two vibrant play structures for children ages 2 to 5 and 5 to 12. Both play structures include shade canopies to shield kids from the sun and encourage families to spend more time at the park. The playground includes a variety of play panels, musical equipment, slides and climbers for the younger players. There's also an area of pods, nets, hoops, and balance beams where children can test their balance and a merry-go-round developed to build their upper body and grip strength. LA's art scene is known for creating trends, and we found a new breed of art, Documenta, which brings a four-legged point of view to the mix. This art show caters to artistic tastes of the canine kind. The Documenta Art Gallery at 7th and Fig first made its grand debut in New York last year, and now it's wowing doggy art connoisseurs in L.A. <laughs> the show's creators believe there is something humans can learn about how dogs approach art. There is an opportunity here to go with a dog's attitude of curiosity and excitement and open-heartedness. And yes, marking your territory is allowed in this art viewing. 
One couple brought their dog Chewy to the grand opening. We try to do any and everything that's available for dogs, uh, whether they're parades for dogs or costume contests or, you know, just meets and greets. Everything about this exhibit caters to dog sensibilities with things that smell, squeak, and are otherwise attractive to canines. Even the shape of this dog is what is most friendly and popular with dogs. There's even a bacon tongue. Chewy seemed pretty indifferent to this masterpiece, until he heard the squeak, that is. But some of the other artistic work drew rave reviews from Chewy. He definitely liked the couch, yeah. He, he, he wanted to sit there for some time. Some dogs dressed to impress for the occasion. This is our, um, our first doggy event, so I just thought, you know, if she looks nice, then we could take better pictures with her. It's something fun for him to do, and I can take some cute pictures of him. <laughs> the owners seemed happy to take a back seat to their canine art lovers, snapping pictures right and left, and doling out treats for proper artsy etiquette. Dogs make life more fun and joyful and they bring so much and lo love and they're like your best friend. To learn more about the canine inspired art show, visit documenta.org. The shows are made possible by the group Arts Brookfield, which brings arts and cultural events to downtown venues like 7th and Fig. Join Councilmember Paul Krikorian for a community hike, support local artists at the Alvera Street Muertos Art Walk, or enjoy local music during the Eagle Rock Music Fest. All this in this week's Things to Do. Hit the trails with Councilmember Paul Krikorian for a community hike to explore the Verdugo Mountain Park. Councilmember Krikorian will lead a hike with community members along the park's trail this easy to moderate hike through Verdugo Mountain Park offers beautiful views of the San Fernando Valley. Remember to dress accordingly for the weather and the outdoors and to bring water and sunscreen. Hikers should meet at the intersection of Edmore Place and Olivia Terrace before the hike begins. This is a great opportunity to explore the community, meet neighbors and enjoy the great outdoors. The hike takes place Saturday, October 6th from 9 to 10.30 a.m. at Verdugo Mountain Park in Sun Valley. Join in for a day of free family fun and entertainment. In its fifth year, the Alvera Street Muertes Art Walk brings together artists from the greater Los Angeles community. Shop small and shop local by supporting these artists and the merchants on Alvera Street. More than 40 local artists will be selling original artwork, clothing, jewelry, face painting, and more. The event is free and open to the public. The Muertes Art Walk takes place Saturday, October 6th at 10 a.m. on Alvera Street. For more, visit alveraevents.com. It's the 19th annual Eagle Rock Music Festival. This by locals, for locals community street festival celebrates the diverse talents and imaginations of the musicians, artists, community members, and merchants of Northeast Los Angeles. The 19th annual Eagle Rock Music Fest is produced by Center for the Arts Eagle Rock in partnership with Councilmember Jose Huizar and CD14. It takes place October 6th from 4 to 10 p.m. For more, visit eaglerockmusicfestival.org. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kane from all of us here at LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org and check out our newest social media videos, LA This Minute. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week. California's next major earthquake and epic battle will take place. Don't fight a brick. 
The brick will win. Dare to prepare dot org.
Okay, good morning, good morning. Today is Wednesday, October 3rd. I want to welcome you to City Hall, welcome you to the Los Angeles City Council. Uh, Madam Clerk, we do have a quorum. Would you please call the roll? Blumenfield, Bonn and Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Harris Dawson, Weezer, Kretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Rue, Wesson. Ten members present in a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much. First order of business. Approval of the minutes. Martinez moves, O'Farrell seconds. Next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Uh, Englander moves and Price seconds. Continue. Items. One through five are items noticed for public hearing. Uh, Mr. President, there are cards on items one through five, sir. Then continue. Items six through 20 are items for which public hearings have been held. The committee report for item eight has been posted and circulated for council's consideration. Okay, let's hold eight and prepare to vote on the remaining items. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. Mr. President, there's a request for item 15 to go forthwith, sir. Without objection, continue. Items 21 through 41 are items for which public hearings have not been held. 10 votes are required for consideration, sir. Okay, so without objection, those items are now before this body. Do you have cards on these items? Yes, sir. There are, are cards on 21 through 41, sir. Okay, then let's move on to the uh, next agenda items. Next is item 42, and that is an item scheduled for closed session. Would you like to hold it on the yeah, desk? Yeah, we'll hold that on the desk for now. That it, brings us where? Mr. President, that takes council back to presentations, items called special or general public comment, sir. Okay, Mr. Previn, Mr. Previn, Mr. Previn, I have you for items, and if I mess up a little bit here, we've got a new screen, but I, I believe I have you for 5, 29, 31, 33, 34, 36, 39, and 40, and then your general public comment. So go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. It's Eric Previn from CD2. Uh, I live in Studio City. I'm on the, the neighborhood council over there, uh, but I'm speaking on behalf of myself today. And I just wanted to say thank you for holding a meeting on uh, October 5th out in Van Nuys. Um, great, great work. And we're looking forward to coming out to the Valley and discussing with people where the debate requirement is in item one on that agenda, which is the ethics commission idea to jack up so, the matching so rate. But we're not actually talking about any of the agenda Okay, let's items get back on your, your items, Mr. Previn. Fair yeah. enough. Nobody loves hall routes more than Bonin and Coretz. And the reason why is because they're desirable for people who are trying to get stuff done and then when they can help out, it sets up a situation like today in public safety where Englander was presiding over a bunch of street vacations. That's odd, because what do they have to do with public safety? That's a very good question, sir, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. Unfortunately, there was a little bit of a Rule 16 transgression that we're researching now, but Holly Walcott is, she's in a closed conference with Nick Grief of Rue's office, trying to work through the moratorium on reform that we are trying to shake loose so that we can amend our bylaws appropriately. Sir, Dean Logan is doing a great job, and I think we'll all agree on that. Um, and Michael Douglas is getting a star, finally. And we do appreciate the opportunity to speak about that in this meeting. But once again, you've put it in another committee, so you can't even say that, which I find um, you know, substandard. And speaking of substandard, on item eight, when one person speaks up and says, I want a cultural historic landmark, and so, then he gets a few Mr. signatures. Mr. Previn, we've already voted for item eight, the hearing was held in committee. It, yes, well, it's being continued. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, I appreciate that. That is a great decision because these, what they do is it's kind of a, um, I'm not gonna say anything inappropriate, they try to block things. So Hold sometimes, this time, actually, the city attorney wants to. My, my mistake, Mr. Previn, um, I believe there's gonna be an amending motion to uh, extend the deadline on number eight. So please 
talk about that one if you wish to. I'd just like to extend uh, to join Commissioner Barron and the other one out. They all voted against this, I guess. The Cultural Historic Committee votes for and against stuff. Sometimes they're for it. They say, this is definitely worth preserving. And sometimes they say, you got to be kidding me. This is just a regular routine house. This is a backdoor HBOZ move. It's not going to work. So what I would like is to invite all of you out to the Sportsman's Landing. We're going to do a little site inspection on October 11. Ken Bernstein has the time. I don't know it exactly. But we just want to make sure if clear-cutting all those trees is what we really want to do here in City of LA. I say no. I say no because I think that that is a great vibe and the kind of a feeling out there is, is actually worth preserving. Um, now I'm going to turn to my general, or you want me to come yes, back? Yes, give him okay. his general the public general, comment. The general public comment um, has to be real calm and cool and collected. Mr. Harris Dawson is not, there he is. We don't want to send women to jail out of town four or five hours away. It's too much burden on the families and recidivism. That's number one. Okay, number two, sir, you're big and powerful and you want to change the matching fund rate up to six to one, but you can't take away the debate, sir. I mean, that, maybe you need to go back and talk with the moratorium on reform specialist, Mr. Rue and Martina. We're not going to get rid of the debate requirement. And if you're not going to amend it, it's going to allow the possibility of Krikorian to pull a, what we call a Krikorian, where he says, I agreed to debate you, but I don't have to actually have a debate, which is absolutely below Bonin's standard. And Bonin is all about clean money, and we all know that, uh, after he raises 400 grand. That's when he announces it. But look, sir, this is a love fest, and what we have to do is get control of that out in Van Nuys. And all the people who speak in support and against don't live in Van Nuys, so I don't know why, if that inadvertently uh, landed there or if we're going to do something meaningful. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Uh, Herman, items one through five, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, through 41, and then your general public. Mr. Herman. And, and Mr. President, because I understand there may be an amending motion to extend the deadline on item uh, eight, the time to act, I suggest we allow the speakers to speak on that item. Too. Fine, and uh, number eight. Mr. Herman, are you going to speak? I would like to, but um, the official city attorney is speaking before I have a chance to speak. No, just speak on the items. Mind your own goddamn business. No, stay on the items, Mr. Herman. So you see, folks, all these restrictions, but yet relative to the authorization of outside counsel to execute a pro bono, why do we have to consult with outside counsel? Why is that? I know for a fact that we're paying outside counsel anywhere between $600 to $900 an hour to deal with our rules. And how do we navigate a pattern and practice of extortion, embezzlement, and stealing public money? Let's ask Paul Krikorian that question, folks. Because even Mr. Englander, Englander and Kanabi is another outside counsel in the so-called let us execute a contract. See. Most of you believe that the city of Los Angeles is innocent. However, I find in CD6, Ms. Martinez and Mr. Weezer on item 32 very offensive. They say that central Los Angeles recycling transfer money is for them to use as a piggy bank. See, I gotta keep the terms very simplistic, very as the term, for those of you in the audience who don't understand English, simple stupid. Just like the city attorney, simple and stupid. Then I turn the page over to Englander and Bonin on item 
34. Establishing overnight parking districts. Well, homeless people don't want parking. They want housing. They don't want you to protect them on property that you deem a parking district for overnight. I know what it's like to sleep in a vehicle. I goddamn have a right to sleep in a vehicle. Any size, any height, and any width the size of my cock. But you still want to provide overnight parking restrictions and deny the homeless the opportunity to a nice, comfortable bed? Not the kind that Jose Weez are and Francine Godoy slept no, in. No, you give him his one minute on public comment. So the point here is, folks, they restrict you on time. All you get is 60 fucking seconds. And all they do is complain and complain that Rule 77 is something we should acknowledge. Well, this facility, this podium is my floor. I have the floor. I am the legislative body. And I'm here to speak on Rainbow Ridge Road. For I am the greater rainbow who supersedes any rainbow, because if I leave here tomorrow, would you still remember me? If I leave today, will you ever remember me? However, Lord, I can't change. Lord, I can't change, because I'm as free as a fucking bird, a bird now that I and you know this bird you'll never change. Fuck you, ho, ho, ho. 42 U.S.C. 1983, Englander. Thank you. Let's vote on uh, Madam Clerk items one through three. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Thank you. Now let's vote on items 21 through 30. Open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. We'll now vote on item 32 and items 34 through 40. Open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Mr. Um, President, uh, item 40 needs to be reconsidered and held on the desk for a substitute motion, sir. Uh, okay, let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. We'll hold that. Also, uh, Mr. President, number six should be reconsidered now that there are 14 members. Okay, we'll reconsider item six. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Now let's actually vote on the item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Do we have a Miss Diaz, uh, Miss Rice? Then let me bring up Miss McAllister. Miss McAllister, please come forward. Item, I have you at items 31 and item 33 and then general public comment. So you get two minutes for your items. Mr. Herman, last warning, don't disrupt the meeting and no more animal sounds or what have you. We let you speak, now you're gonna let Ms. McAllister speak. Ma'am, good to see you, go right ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, item number 31, you want to uh, hire some pro bono, pro bono attorneys. The city says it has 525 odd attorneys. I did the research, most of them are not even lawyers. They're not registered with the Bar Association. I don't know why you keep going out getting pro bono. I know what pro bono means. That means that they're gonna work for free. These Jews are not working for free. You know that. They're gonna get paid, okay? So I don't like this pro bono. We don't need pro bono. If you have all those attorneys with a budget of 138 million a year, we don't need any pro bonos, okay? We need some real attorneys. This one's sitting up here. He's not doing his job. He's making 160000 to 180000 He's only been on the city's payroll for two years. 
He makes more than Maxine Waters them in Congress. What the crap is going on here, uh, Mr. Uh, President? We need to fix this thing. All of you are going to be held responsible, including Weezer. We, we don't want your wife here, okay? No, come on, come on. Now, another thing, number 30, I just had to get that in, Mr. President. Come on now. Number 33, the Safe Parking Pilot Program, I think that's a good idea. We need them in all the districts. You only have five districts here, and I like the idea that Lassa is handling it because Lassa knows about the homeless because Lassa is in charge of that, but I think we need to audit LASA because I saw some conflicts of interest at, at LASA. So yes, they, LASA, it's okay, but they're not doing their job. They got a website saying they're supposed, they have a list of the homeless, you go over there and they lie and say they don't. So where am I gonna send the people? People come to me all the time, I give them advice, free. I don't charge them a dime. They try to give me money, I say I'm not in this for money. I'm here to get you off the street. Okay, so, that's what I want to say about the pilot program. We need them in all, and I see Mr. Koretz, he's going to get one in his district. So we need them in all districts, not just these five. Now, my, Let's my public... Let's give her a uh, minute for general public. Thank you. And Mr. President, I'd like to thank you for starting to build your affordable housing. And Mr. O'Farrell, of course, the two of you. And uh, Harris Dawson, he said he's, built, he's tearing down something. I haven't been over there yet. Uh, we need to get this person off the attorney, city attorney's payroll. Her name is Zena Houston. She's the highest paid attorney at $259,580. She doesn't have a license with the bar. We need her off the payroll today. We've got a Noreen Vinson, $259,000. I couldn't find her any connection with her with the city. Now, some attorneys I found, they are licensed, but they have no connection with the city. The, the attorneys I found with the bar, they have something, if it's a city email or some kind of contact information. So I think the ones that don't have information, those are the ghost. See, we have ghost employees. You can put my name down there, I would never know. And then you take the check and cash it. So most of these are ghosts. Now I want a list of these 300 non-employees that works for the city attorney's office. I want a list of all 300. I'm gonna go through those, thank you. Thank you, Ms. McAllister. Uh, Madam Clerk, City Attorney, that concludes the multi-comment uh, section. Mr. President, for the record, the substitute motion for item number 40 has been posted and circulated and is now before council, sir. Okay, let's, uh, on that item, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Okay, let's also vote on items 4 and 5. Mr. President, item 40 itself needs to be uh, voted on also. Oh, I'm sorry, we just did it. So let's actually vote on 40 right now. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Now we'll move to items four and five. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Now we'll move to vote on items 31 and 41. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Mr. Koretz. This is on item 33, correct? Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Since this motion was posted, Safe Parking LA and LASA have worked to right-size the budget for the safe parking site at 1739 South La Cienega to ensure that it can be properly staffed and operated for a full year. And this has led the budget to be adjusted to a more accurate 132,000. And accordingly, I'd like to offer an amendment to the report before us to raise the amount in section 3.d uh, to 132,000. The rest of the report appears to be in order. Okay, it's been seconded. Let's prepare to vote. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Thank you. Mr. Bonin, are you? Uh, yes, Mr. President. I'd like to ask if we could uh, reconsider item 10 for the purpose of a continuance. Okay. Let's uh, vote on reconsideration on item 10. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. You'd like to continue it how long? Till the 9th, next Tuesday. If that could be continued to the 9th. 
Mr. Wezar, are you ready with your presentation? Then the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, and good morning, colleagues. It gives me great pleasure to present a very special resolution in honor of one of the Los Angeles' most anticipated culinary events, and I'm talking about La Feria de los Moles. that has now become one of the largest culinary events in the country, where people come to gather different plates of mole uh, made in different ways, uh, both from Puebla in Mexico and Oaxaca. Each year, they have a competition to see who makes the best mole, either Oaxaca or Puebla. And Oaxaca has how many different? Uh, 13. And Puebla has one. Yeah. Oaxaca has 13 flavors of mole, and Puebla has one. It's said, there's a uh, urban legend that uh, hundreds of years ago, uh, there was a competition, and that uh, Oaxaca came and presented their 13 flavors of mole and Puebla said, we only have one, and we won. And <laughs> they just had to have one to win. But it's always great to be out there to see um, families and people getting together, enjoying some good food. Uh, I want to first, uh, before I continue, recognize and thank Union de Poblanos en el Exterior, also known as UPEXT, and particularly my good friend and the Mole Festival founder, Pedro Ramos, who is in Puebla as we speak. I also want to acknowledge Luis Flores, the co-founder of uh, the event, and Lourdes Juarez, the current president uh, that uh, has moved this, uh, moving it from Placita Alvera, where we had the first one now, to Grant Park. About 10 years ago, uh, Pedro Ramos and Lourdes came to my office and asked us to find a location for this idea they had to have a festival for Los Moles and we accommodated them at Placita Alvera, and they took off from there. And as I mentioned, it's now one of the largest culinary events in the country that brings people from all backgrounds together to celebrate family, food, diversity. Uh, and mole is actually uh, Mexico's state dish, and it's a mixture of ingredients from three continents, North America, Europe, and Africa. And it has made this uh, culinary treasure the first international dish created in the Americas. Uh, and there's no better place in the entire world to celebrate an international dish with such an array, array of diverse influences than here in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, at this time, I'd also like, uh, also like to acknowledge the, president, uh, uh, the, the presence of Gilberto Luna from the Mexican General Counsel's Office. Thank you for being here. And also, I want to thank uh, and welcome Marco Antonio Cruz, who is the president of the Tourism Board for the city of Zacatlán de las Manzanas. Bienvenido, señor. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. And I also want to welcome LAPD officer Joseph Lopez and all our other guests and supporters here today. Welcome. Let's around. give them all a round of applause. Welcome. And this year, it's extra special. Uh, as we know, we will be celebrating the city's first ever Indigenous Day on a Monday, and uh, the Festival of Los Moles falls on a Sunday. Uh, Councilmember Mitch O'Farrell has combined forces with the Feria to uh, celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day as well, and to combine forces as we celebrate Indigenous food from Mexico. So welcome, Councilmember Mitch O'Farrell. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Huizar, and to all the distinguished guests and the uh, organization of the Feria de los Moles, I really want to thank all of you, um, and I want to give a special shout out to Lourdes Juarez, uh, the current president of Up Next, um, for agreeing uh, to go above and beyond and extend the festival one more day because this coming Monday, October 8th, is the inaugural Indigenous Peoples Day celebration in the city of Los Angeles because as everyone knows, we eliminated Columbus Day last year to replace it 
with Indigenous Peoples Day. And what better way to add um, an element of celebration of Indigenous culture than to bring along the uh, La Farea de los Moles, which has indigenous origins with the food uh, that has become recognized the world over. Um, I couldn't be more delighted to have this presence uh, on Indigenous Peoples Day, um, and uh, we want to thank you and really acknowledge the fact that you're going to add so much to this day uh, because it's a critical piece of you know, celebrating uh, First Peoples everywhere in the Western Hemisphere, indigenous, Native American. That's what the celebration on Monday is all about. And the fact that the La Farea de los Moles is now part of that really makes the whole day more complete. So thank you so much. Congratulations. And let's all enjoy this festival on Sunday and Monday. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Ofero. And now I'd like to introduce Lourdes Juarez, the current president and also one of the co-founders for La, for La Feria. Welcome, Lourdes. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us uh, today. Uh, many many uh, noticed that we brought uh, Tlaxcala into the house. Uh, here in the city of LA, we have people from all over Mexico. And the reason why we present mole, or, or the reason why mole, uh, La Feria de los Moles was uh, created is because uh, Pedro Ramos, he wanted to honor his grandmother. And the only way we could do it was to uh, convince other families to re, um, continue to uh, um, maintain the recipes. So therefore, we are honored to present uh, this event once again in the city of Los Angeles. We have visitors from around the world to this festival. And of course, we are also honored to be part of uh, October 8th and the Jewish People's Day in, a, in a IPD, which uh, uh, we will have a lot of food as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mole was founded in the city of Puebla when uh, we, they were having some visitors from Spain and the local uh, uh, sisters from a Catholic church worked with the local indigenous population and the different spices and items that were brought over from Africa and Europe and other places. And so it certainly is an international dish, but um, Ms. Martinez, our councilwoman, as you know, is also from Zacatecas and Zacatecas has a pretty good Mole plate. So I'm inviting her to uh, bring a mole plate one day and challenge Oaxaca and Puebla. You make good mole, okay. Um, Zacatecas also makes a pretty good mole plate. So we should put that here and have them challenge us out one, one day, right? That's right. So thank you so much. And on behalf of the city of Los Angeles, we want to uh, present you this resolution to La Feria de los Moles on your 11th annual anniversary. Thank you so much for bringing this to the city of Los Angeles. It's really showcasing us as a city that welcomes all and celebrates our diversity. Felicidades. Let's give them a round of applause. Okay, now I'd like to recognize Mr. Cedillo for another presentation.
colleagues has a um, related matter. Let me uh, bring to your attention that uh, this month will be uh, National Healthcare Week and El Mes de Salud. El Mes de Salud is a uh, collaboration with 100 organizations, community clinics, government agencies, hospitals, uh, the Los Angeles Department of Public Health, uh, who are involved in bringing awareness to the services that are available uh, for healthcare for the community. Medical services, as you know, are complicated and expensive for immigrant communities, and this initiative is to bring awareness to the many services that are low cost and free for the community. This year we're gonna focus on mental health. Mental health has been a challenge for many of our communities. It has its own stigma, uh, particularly in the uh, Latino community. And so we wanna make sure that people understand that this is a matter that can be addressed uh, and that there can be solutions and resolutions to the many challenges that uh, are created by uh, mental health uh, complications. Uh, what we realize is that as Latinos, we face many traumatic experiences. These are traumatic times for our community. Uh, each and every day as we think about the many children taken from the arms of their mothers, held in detention, or the concerns over ICE, I am frequently stopped as I walk around the community by people's concerns over the news, the, notici the noticias about what positions other cities are taking, whether or not they're safe to go out in the community. And this is a, a, a trauma that is uh, of an entire community and one that though is, uh, impacts individuals. And so we're proclaiming this mess de salud to encourage Latino constituents to focus on prevention and avoid waiting until they have to visit an emergency room. Mesa Salud coincides with activities of the Binational Health Week, a project you may remember, uh, Mr. President, when you were speaker. An initiative began by uh, Sochi Castaneda, funded by the uh, endowment and brought together this cohort and this collaboration that is now both binational, but also uh, affects other countries as well. Today we're joined by the very capable Hilberto Luna and the Los Angeles County Department uh, Health Deputy Cynthia Harding. Uh, Mr. Luna, uh, please come forward. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. On behalf of the Consulate General of Mexico, I would like to express our gratitude to this city council and to council member Gil Cedillo for supporting the health programs of the Mexican Consulate for many years. Uh, the Binational Health Initiative that we are celebrating this month uh, is a program of the Mexican government that uh, is being replicated uh, by the 50 Mexican consulates in the United States. Uh, this health program has been around for about uh, 15 years and just last year it uh, benefited more than 1.7 million people all over the United States. Uh, this year, here in Los Angeles, we will be working with over 100 organizations, community clinics, uh, hospitals, uh, dental offices, and, and medical offices, to provide the Latino community with uh, free medical services and with important information regarding uh, uh, health prevention programs. In this regard, I have to recognize especially the great support we have received from the County Department of Public Health, uh, Ms. Cynthia Harding here present, and of course, I would like to thank the City Council for having us uh, this morning and for making the city of Los Angeles a very welcoming and very inclusive city for the Mexican community. Thank you very much. No, thank you. You're welcome. Also, uh, Mr. President, and you know all the great work that the County of Los Angeles does, uh, we're happy to partner with the Department of Public Health, and I have for you Deputy Director Cynthia Harding. Welcome, Deputy Director. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Council Member Cedillo, and thank you very much to all of the uh, Council Members here for your recognition of Mes de la Salud, and special thanks to our partnership with the Mexican Consulate. For over 10 years, we've been working together to provide information and resources and services at no cost or low cost to our Latino community, and to make sure that all people in the County of Los Angeles can live a healthy, uh, and safe life. And uh, Council Member Cedillo, you talked about the emotional trauma many of our families face, the 
the stress that they're under with the ICE raids and with the, the, the fear of families being separated under uh, proposed uh, immigration policies. And one of the things that we can do is provide information to our communities, provide resources, and we're able to do that in this strong partnership with the Consulate of Mexico and with the support of the City of Los Angeles so that all of our residents can live a healthy life. Thank you very much. We have a And so with that, Mr. President, we offer this uh, resolution for, from the city of Los Angeles for the uh, Mes de Salud. I thank you. Let's give them one more round of applause. You want to make an announcement on item eight, uh, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. The amending motion for item eight has been posted, circulated, and is now before council, sir. Okay, if I could have Daniel Friedman come forward. Uh, uh, Leisha, oh God, are you gonna have to come up and help me? Uh, Gabriel Getter, Anna Brooks, please come forward and identify yourself. Akhalish. Okay. Yes, sir. Councilman Wesson, uh, President Wesson, members of the council, my name is Daniel Friedman. I'm here on behalf of the property owner of 1848 Gramercy. This is a property that all the experts, other than the individual who lives on the streets who submitted this as a nomination for historic consideration, all the experts, other than her, have viewed this as a non-historic property. It went before the Cultural Heritage Commission uh, and received a unanimous 5-0 vote against designating this property as a historic monument. Experts have been retained, including the city staff who have looked at this, and they have also found it is not a historic monument. I understand, President Wesson, your concern about protecting historic resources, and I understand your concern about having the city give it a look, and I think that was reasonable, and that happened here. And the city and the Cultural Heritage Commission found that it's not a historic resource. There has been also concern about what happened at a UNNC neighborhood council meeting, whether they voted in support or didn't. I reviewed the city's rules for tabulating votes. It did not get a motion, a motion in support. I hope that you please deny this. My, my client is not Bob Hope. He cannot come here with giant resources to stop this, but it is a, a, a gross egregious misuse of the Cultural Heritage Ordinance. Okay. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Okay, if I can have the next speaker, please come and identify yourself. Hey all, uh, my name is Gabriel Getter. I'm a local resident here in LA for over 20 years. And um, I'm here with the owner uh, of this property that they are trying to push a motion forward to de designate it historic after the Cultural Heritage Commission has determined that it's not historic. So I'm not even understanding why we're, we're all here right now, um, but this property is not historic and this motion should be opposed and denied. So this is what I'm here for, and you'll hear from the rest of us. We've done extensive reports and research on this property, and there's no, where, no, there's no significance to this property as being historic. So I, I urge all of you guys to oppose this motion. Thank you. Next speaker. And nobody is Please, listening. Please, next speaker. Tell. Good morning, Anna Marie Brooks. I was retained to look at this property. I've done many, many monument applications over the years. It is in no way historic. They did manage to make a monument out of another one on the block, which truly was historic. So they guess they decided that anything could be made historic. However, this is not historic. CHC found it not historic. Survey LA found it not historic. The CRA survey found it not historic. How many other people can we ask? Can we go to God and ask, is it historic? The person who nominated this has lived on the block for 40 years. The Waha has been in existence over 30 years. Why are they just now nominating this? Oh, because it's up for development. It's not even part of the neighborhood neighborhood. It's a commercial property. Thank you. 
Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, my name is Akhilesh Jha. I am the owner of the property. Continuing from what Anne Marie was telling you, that why did it take 30 years for Laura Myers or Waha to nominate the property when the property is in such a mess right now that every expert that I have looked at this property has said that this is not worth the historic cultural monument of Los Angeles. Do you know when this has started? You would like to know that. When I, when I applied for the TOC project to build a affordable housing, which all of you champion right now, this is all started. So you can see now that at one point, you champion the affordable housing. At other point, you deny the, the, the opportunity for a common person like me to do such a thing. So I deny you to go by the facts and do what is the right thing uh, is to be done here. Thank you. OK, that's the last speaker on that item. OK, let, let's uh, hold this on the desk for a minute, all right? OK, now, do, uh, is there Alex Evans? I'm going to do general public. Alex, are you here? Delbert? Delbert Davis? Come forward. If I called your name, come to the, this your general public comment. Yes, sir. Council members and city attorney, I haven't been in these chambers in a long time. Uh, I haven't been here in many years. I was an officer, X-ray 1045 with general service, and uh, Elder, uh, Officer Martinez uh, recognized me. I'm here today because I know we have a homeless population crisis, but I want to bring to your attention, I live in the west end of the valley, and I've contacted Councilman Englander's office with a Mr. Cruz. Uh, we live in a 60-unit uh, complex owned by uh, Ken Lore Management out of Agura, and they, uh, this last month, gave us a 30- and 60-day hike of over three to $400 to all the tenants. Um, unsustainable for many of the tenants that have been there since the, the apartment complex has been made. It falls out of the rent control by one year, which is unfortunate. And many of the people which, may I continue to no, speak? It's one minute, sir. If I gave you more, I'd have to give more people more. Okay. So I'm sorry about that. Next speaker, please. Identify yourself. Hey, my name's Alex Evans from the Bob Baker Marinette Theater. Uh, thank you for having me here today. I just want to say hi to all the city council. Yesterday, we announced at the end of November we the last shows in the current space, but I just want to say we're in LA to stay. Uh, we'll be here for a long, long time. We're about to announce an ambitious future programming schedule all throughout your districts. I just want to invite you guys all down to the theater to say hi, and uh, thank you so much for your time, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Danita Huerta. Danita? Do we have Danita Huerta, Sarah Jane Swartz? Mr. Freeman, did you want to speak again on general public comment? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Hi. CD4, Sarah Jane Schwartz, a constituent Bill of Rights. Safety must always come first before everything else. The process laid out by the city must always be followed, whether it be legislative or through the courts. Representatives must present, represent the constituents, not other politicians, power or money, because that would leave constituents with no representation. If a proposal sign significantly and directly involves a constituent, you have an obligation to meet with them beyond their one minute of public comment. If you have a constituent that has a close family member that has been killed due to the same conditions you are advocating, you have an obligation to meet with them. Neighborhoods have intrinsic value to the district and city. You must fight to preserve them. For example, residential neighborhoods should not be turned into Disneyland. When constituents are directly affected by proposed legislation or, have the, or in the public record, you have an obligation to keep them in the loop and, uh, and alert them to public meetings. Remember, you work for us. You have to help us and facilitate the city machinery in our favor. Thank you. Thank you. So if I can have Mr. Uh, Freeman, followed by Ms. Brooks.
to, to item eight? No, you uh, you signed up for eight and general public comment, so I, I thought you had something additional or something different to say. Uh, no, I was hoping to just speak on eight and to encourage this uh, council to okay. deny that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So with that, that uh, closes uh, Madam Clerk and Mr. City Attorney general public comment on all of the items. That brings us where? That brings council to uh, item eight or uh, 42 closed session, sir. Okay, sergeants, let's, uh, uh, in fact, uh, Mr. City Attorney, it's appropriate, I think, at this time for us to move into closed session. If you need to make an announcement, sergeants, you can begin clearing the chambers.
Having the foresight to plan for my business. To plan for my future. To plan for my family provides a peace of mind. Having the foresight to sign up for Alert LA County. Gives me that peace of mind when an incident happens close to my home. Or near my park. Alert LA County is a free automated system which sends out information about emergency events via telephone, text, and email. Events may include disasters, evacuations, and safety notices. Register at alert.lacounty.gov. Alert LA County. Knowing when you need it most. Having the foresight to plan for my business. To plan for my future. To plan for my family provides a peace of mind. Having the foresight to sign up for Alert LA County. Gives me that peace of mind when an incident happens close to my home. Or near my school. Alert LA County is a free automated system which sends out information about emergency events via telephone, text, and email. Events may include disasters, evacuations, and safety notices. Register at alert.lacounty.gov. Alert LA County. Knowing when you need it most.
Having the foresight to plan for my business. To plan for my future. To plan for my family provides a peace of mind. Having the foresight to sign up for Alert LA County. Gives me that peace of mind when an incident happens close to my home. Or near my park. Alert LA County is a free automated system which sends out information about emergency events via telephone, text, and email. Events may include disasters, evacuations, and safety notices. Register at alert.lacounty.gov. Alert LA County. Knowing when you need it most. Having the foresight to plan for my business. To plan for my future. To plan for my family provides a peace of mind. Having the foresight to sign up for Alert LA County. Gives me that peace of mind when an incident happens close to my home. Or near my school. Alert LA County is a free automated system which sends out information about emergency events via telephone, text, and email. Events may include disasters, evacuations, and safety notices. Register at alert.lacounty.gov. Alert LA County. Knowing when you need it most.
Having the foresight to plan for my business. To plan for my future. To plan for my family provides a peace of mind. Having the foresight to sign up for Alert LA County. Gives me that peace of mind when an incident happens close to my home. Or near my park. Alert LA County is a free automated system which sends out information about emergency events via telephone, text, and email. Events may include disasters, evacuations, and safety notices. Register at alert.lacounty.gov. Alert LA County. Knowing when you need it most. Having the foresight to plan for my business. To plan for my future. To plan for my family provides a peace of mind. Having the foresight to sign up for Alert LA County. Gives me that peace of mind when an incident happens close to my home. Or near my school. Alert LA County is a free automated system which sends out information about emergency events via telephone, text, and email. Events may include disasters, evacuations, and safety notices. Register at alert.lacounty.gov. Alert LA County. Knowing when you need it most. This is a test of the National Emergency Alert System. This system was developed by broadcast and cable operators in voluntary cooperation with the Federal Emergency Management Agency, the Federal Communications Commission, and local authorities to keep you informed in the event of an emergency. If this had been an actual emergency, an official message would have followed the tone alert you heard at the start of this message. A similar wireless emergency alert test message has been sent out to all cell phones in the nation. Phones will receive the message, others will not. No action is required.
Having the foresight to plan for my business. To plan for my future. To plan for my family provides a peace of mind. Having the foresight to sign up for Alert LA County. Gives me that peace of mind when an incident happens close to my home. Or near my park. Alert LA County is a free automated system which sends out information about emergency events via telephone, text, and email. Events may include disasters, evacuations, and safety notices. Register at alert.lacounty.gov. Alert LA County. Knowing when you need it most. Having the foresight to plan for my business. To plan for my future. To plan for my family provides a peace of mind. Having the foresight to sign up for Alert LA County. Gives me that peace of mind when an incident happens close to my home. Or near my school. Alert LA County is a free automated system which sends out information about emergency events via telephone, text, and email. Events may include disasters, evacuations, and safety notices. Register at alert.lacounty.gov. Alert LA County. Knowing when you need it most.
having the foresight So as we're coming back into closed, uh, I'll just say that there was no uh, action to be reported out under the Brown Act from the closed session. Okay, we're back uh, in session. Sergeants, we're good, we're ready to go. Okay, Madam Clerk, uh, what uh, business is still before this body? Council still has item number eight, sir. Okay, on item eight, I'm gonna make a verbal motion that we receive and file uh, that motion. Uh, I think Mr. Bloomingfield will give me a second on that. And uh, Mr. City Attorney, you may want to clarify what that actually means. So what that's gonna mean is that the decision of the Cultural Heritage Commission, which is to decline the designation, is gonna stand. So there won't be a designation for the property. Okay. And council will be taking no further action on that. All right, so. Yes, sir. So, okay, so uh, now council can vote on the verbal motion, sir. Okay. On a verbal motion to receive and file, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay. What further business is before council this? Council has file? motions for posting and referral, sir. They have posted their referred announcements. Mr. O'Farrell. Mr. President, uh, colleagues. This coming Monday, October 8th, is the first um, ever Indigenous Peoples Day celebration in the city of Los Angeles. We're going to publish the schedule of events online today and send them out in all social media channels. But I just want to give a rundown of what people can expect if they're watching uh, this, this council meeting, and uh, it is the following. Um, 7 to 7.45, sunrise ceremony with the Tongva blessing and presentation of the ceremonial staff. We have a run for the people, a 5K fun run and walk, beginning at the corner of First and Main, sponsored by the United American Indian Involvement. Beginning at 9.30, we have our first panel discussion uh, with the Los Angeles City County Native American Indian Commission's dialogue, indigenizing public spaces at City Hall Council Chamber Room 340. At 10, uh, from 10 to 4, the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian presents the children's area at Grand Park and block number one. 11 a.m. invocation and procession of nations on the Spring Street uh, stage. From 12 to 5, uh, Grand Park activation. Food vendors presented by La Faria de los Moles. Uh, the Indigenous Peoples Day powwow presented by Southern California Indian Center Incorporated. Live art presented by LA County Arts Commission with craft vendors and community booths. From one to two, our gallery opening, Indigenous Peoples Day Hall of Nations, resolutions and flags from around the United States and beyond, the on exhibit at City Hall Rotunda and the Bridge Gallery. From one to 4.45 p.m., our music talent, uh, presented by the Consulate General of Canada in Los Angeles, presenting on the Hill Street music stage uh, Jessa, uh, Jessa Calderon, Artson, Cody Blackbird Band, Drezas, PJ Vegas, Mato Wa uh, we Uhi um, on the Hill Street uh, stage, as I mentioned. 1.30 p.m., a film screening of 
uh, Valhalla Entertainment presenting Mankiller, the story of Wilma Mankiller, the first woman principal chief of the Cherokee Nation uh, in the Board of Public Works, room 350. From 2 to 2.45, panel discussion, Indigenous Pride Los Angeles presents Balancing Cultural Community and LGBTQ Two-Spirit Community, uh, Council Chamber, Room 340. 2 to 2.30, theatrical performances, Native Voices at the Autry presents Stories from the Indian Boarding School at City Hall at the Bradley Tower. From 3 to 4, Unity Speeches, elected officials and special guests at the Spring Street main stage. From 3 to 3.45, Panel discussion, Native American women uh, in council chambers, room 340. From 3.30 to 4.45, DTLA Proud presents Two-Spirit Pride at City Hall South Courtyard. From 4 to 4.45, panel discussion, the history of Indigenous Peoples Day Los Angeles advocates and allies, again in, in council chambers, room 340. And from 5 to 5.45, our last panel discussion, LA Skins Fest presents Native Americans in the Media, again at Council Chamber 340. From 5 to 5.30, our fashion show presented by Darlene Perkins, the designer, Red Lighting Couture, Spring Street Main Stage. And finally, from 5.45 to 8 p.m., our grand finale and celebration concert um, with the Los Angeles City County Native American Indian Commission featuring the Black Eyed Peas, and our closer, Redbone, on the Spring Street main stage. This is a free event. It's history in the making, the first ever inaugural event of Indigenous Peoples Day Los Angeles. All are invited. Thank you. Uh, con again, congratulations to, to you, Mr. Englander. I mean, Mr. <laughs> Mr. O'Farrell. I thought you grew. It's anyway. not the first time that happened, and it won't be the last. But to all of the indigenous people, that was a, a that was a great uh, piece of work. So congratulations to you, Mitchell. You did a great job. Man. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for your participation and your collaboration in crafting this history-making um, initiative. And also, I've got to give the hats off to the city family and my staff, uh, who have cast yes. a wide net to make all of this happen and are working around the clock no, they, they, to make this they a work success. Very, they work very hard. So anyway, good job. Thank you, and, sir. And you kind of like it when good things occur. All right, uh, let's all rise. Let us all rise for adjourning motions. I'm looking to Mr. Weezar's side. I do not see any adjourning motions to my left. I'm now looking to my right. I don't see any adjourning motions to my right. Members, uh, this meeting is adjourned.